It's been a long time since the TV show has made me feel as much emotion as Shogun has. Episode 2, Tomorrow is Tomorrow, gave me a couple of giggles, raised my heart rate, and I'm sure someone started cutting onions in the room a couple of times throughout the episode. Right out of the gates, I'm going to tell you that I'm giving episode 2 of Shogun, Tomorrow is Tomorrow, a 9 out of 10. I wanted desperately to give it a 10 out of 10 as I had such a good time watching. Again, every time the screen went dark, I was silently booing as I feared it was the end of the episode. Thankfully, we're maintaining the hour-long run times. I had to take it down a notch as the majority of the show was shot at night and it was hard to see what was happening at times, especially during scenes of action. This isn't helped by the fact that when Shogun becomes available to stream, it is still broad daylight for another three hours where I live, so you can see your reflection in the TV. Is that a problem with Shogun, or is it a problem with my setup? I would argue that it's both, and I really need to get an OLED TV. Let me know if you had issues with the darkness. This show is so beautiful. The scenery, the sets, the people, the costumes, the weapons, the CGI, it's all basically flawless. I could not ask for more wonderful images to feast my eyes upon. Don't forget the music. My god, especially the music. Talk about doing some heavy lifting. Amazing pieces. Driving marches. Love it. And characters. Actual characters with actual believable motives. These people have good reasons to be doing the things that the plot has them doing, but it also places limitations upon it. They're not just breezing through their troubles like some shows. These people are bleeding to achieve their goals. They're putting themselves at risk and it raises the tension levels. I wish more shows would do this. The acting is also terrific. I love Tadanobu Asano's Yabushigi. He's got that cheeky look about him that you know you couldn't stay mad at him for very long. Hiroyuki Sanada is wonderful as Lord Yoshi Taranaga. He has such a noble presence, yet behind it is a wisdom and inquisitiveness that makes me want to see him succeed. At first I wasn't sold on Cosmo Jarvis as John Blackthorn. I thought he could do with a throat lozenge. After he really throws himself into looking the fool in this episode, I have to admire his work. And the guy's ripped too. If there's a Tarzan remake in the pipeline, get him signed up. I'm also happy to see Nesta Carbonell back as Vasco Rodriguez in this episode. He was my favourite part of episode 1 and he's hamming it up again in this episode. I feel like they could go on forever with their friendly rivalry. A marvellous episode of television and yet again I find myself counting down the hours till Tuesday. On to the spoilers. Yabushigi's writing a will. Did they write a new one whenever they know they're in danger? I would have thought in scenarios like this where you potentially betrayed your master, they would be unlikely to honour it. Ooh, a further twist. The captain of the black ship doesn't work for the church, but for the crown. So he's just in it for the profits and couldn't care less about the church's interests. So the assassin had been working in the palace for years as a sleeper agent, ready to act when the command is given. So that explains how she was able to gain access. Also, Due to this level of professionalism, it's revealed that it would be very expensive to hire her. So it basically rules out anyone but the highest lords, or the church. We know this, but the characters are coming to the realisation. Torunaga's clan is taking Blackthorn to Ajiro. Is that the beach town where they were in the first episode? I went back and checked episode 1. Yes. Yes it is. Then we see poor Fuji with the remains of her husband and baby. That poor baby. If you don't feel something in this scene, then I pity you. Oh, she has to step up for this new fight. Damn, she looks so determined. I would not mess with her. However, she is newly single, with some spare swords lying around the place. Just the thing a big gaijin needs to assimilate. It's funny watching this scene a second time, trying to work out who's in on it and who isn't. What a cunning ruse. The old fake labour pains to distract everyone while your lord sneaks into the litter tree. Lady Kiri sure does have some sass. She might be my new favourite. Good idea to keep Yabushigi around to make Ashido think he's still in control of the situation. You sir are a silly little man and your hair looks like the tail of a pony. <laughs> Say it, don't spray it. Good save by a young Mr Blackthorn. 
I like this kind of stuff, where casual observers think someone is a buffoon, yet if you know, you know. Now begins some of the annoying dark scenes. When they're all wearing similar clothing, it makes it very difficult to see who's fighting whom. Mariko Sama has a pretty impressive kill to death ratio, it's over 9000. I like Yabushi telling Toronaga that he'd like to know the plan beforehand, and Toronaga with the dismissive, I'll keep it in mind. They make it to the harbour and the guy that Blackthorn saved from going overboard in episode 1 is in charge of the crew. What a stroke of luck. Just as they set off to the ship, Mariko Sama's husband Bunturo makes it to the shore. But it's too late, and they won't turn back for him. He has a kick-ass fight to the death. It's very realistic with him actually getting tired for a change, instead of the usual stamina gods of these kinds of shows. Great acting by Shinosuke Abe. He came across as a real jerk earlier on in the episode, but I guess you have to understand the code their culture is run by. There's still hope that he lives as we never did see him die. Seems unlikely though. I got a bit choked up when Toronaga shouted his name and bowed towards him. What a moving show of respect. Kiyama has his men blocking the entrance to the port with fiery arrows and boarding craft. John Blackthorne spots them and when he says we're dead, poor old Fuji gets a twinkle in her eye. You promise? Very clever. Toronaga wants out of the port, as does the black ship. And Kiyama's men are Christian so they won't attack the ship that works for the church. The captain doesn't think he needs permission, so Taranaga offers him half of the profit from his silk investment, and offers the church the construction of a church in his home city of Edo, in return for turning Kiyama and Ono the Christian Bushos towards his side. Talk about willing and dealing. They don't want Blackthorn to come, but Taranaga insists that he is his guest, but they give him the ledgers and the rudder that proves he is a pirate. So his hands are tied, metaphorically. Blackthorn won't give in that easily, so he gets the crew to row faster than the black ship can sail. I had a couple of chuckles at the lines that Blackthorn and Rodriguez yell at each other from their tillers. Good old Rodriguez eases off on the rudder to let Blackthorn have some room. Now they're even for Blackthorn saving his life on the journey from Ajiro. Ishido is watching the whole time, so now he must suspect that the Portuguese and Toronaga have some kind of arrangement. Ishido and the Christian Bushos are having an argument about how they let Toronaga slip out between their fingers. Kiyama says that it's unfortunate that there's so many bandits around, while Ishido says, if you idiots had given me the vote on Toronaga's execution, I could have given you the heretic the next day, you galoots. <laughs> Hiromatsu comes in and announces that Toronaga has quit the Council of Regents. They don't care, he'll be outvoted 4-0. Then Hiramatsu reminds them that they need all five to be present to vote. <laughs> Got him! Cop that, you salty whale's tit. Man, if looks could kill. Toronaga tells Blackthorn that while he has proof he is a pirate, it would take ages to translate. Wink. So in the meantime, you can train Yabushi and Toronaga's son to fight like a pom. Yes, Blackthorn and Yabushi on a Kino adventure. I got a little choked up when Toronaga proclaimed Blackthorn Hadamoto. Even Yabushiki was taken aback. And when he thanked him in Japanese as a sign of respect, I got chills. Such a good scene. Hadamoto is a type of samurai that is high enough level as to be able to request an audience with the Shogun. We finish with a bit of a bonding scene between Toronaga and Blackthorn. Bonding, not bondage. Toronaga wants Blackthorn to teach him to dive. Now you may not like it, but Blackthorn is what peak male fitness looks like. I got a broad smile across my face when Toronaga said, Here we go. This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. You know what? Screw this. I'm bumping it up to 10 out of 10 like it deserves. Bring on next week. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.